Let's start with a prayer. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to meet and to discuss the Holy Sacrifice the Mass. We love you in a special way, the Gonzalez family, for the soul of Dora. And we ask your own help for our own families and our own souls. We may serve you more closely and please you more fully. We entrust this time and this conversation to you through our mother as we say, Hail Mary. Amen. Oh, the grace of the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. So we are on number 62 of uh, Bishop's letter. Uh, the Sunday obligation. On that note, I would like to say a couple of things about attending Mass on Sunday. For well, daily attendance is laudable, it's praiseworthy, it's good for those that are able to. They're required to bear church law to participate in Mass on Sundays. This is no way the church simply admits another rule, but rather for helping us to fulfill the third commandment, keeping the Lord's day holy. But the 16th reminds us in this regard. The line of faith is in danger when we lose the desire to share the liberation of the Eucharist, the commemoration of the Passover victory. Participating in the Sunday Liturgical Assembly, all of the sisters, with whom we form one body in Jesus Christ, is demanded by our Christian conscience and at the same time the foreign conscience. To lose the sense of Sunday as the Lord's Day, a day to be sanctified. And it's symptomatic of the loss of the pathetic sense of Christian freedom, the freedom of the children of God. In the footnote we read, the same play that many stress the importance of worshiping God on the itself, not allowing Saturday evening to become a God. We recognize that Saturday evening is the beginning of the first vesper, so early part of Sunday. The time of the Sunday of what we should can be filled. You need to remember that the Sunday itself is meant to be kept holy set up as a day of the Jew So, a couple of things. Just to clarify, because some people are confused about this, if I can't go to Mass on Sunday, I substitute it with the Tuesday Mass or Wednesday Mass or Mass during the week. No. You can substitute it with the Wednesday Mass. <laughs> Very good, yes. Um, so it's not just any random day we go in, it's a particular day of Sunday. Why Sunday? What makes Sunday so important? What are we doing to keep the Lord's day? It's a day of rest. It's a day of rest? Yeah. And, and what do we celebrate? The resurrection. The resurrection. Resurrection. Uh, we're celebrating the freedom that Christ won from sin. We're, remember, we're, we're going back to our roots as what made us God's children. We're doing our love for God and worship for God. And we do so by a couple of different ways. So first of all, so most of the time it belongs to God. The obligation is not give God an hour. The obligation is give God the day. And part of that day is going to mass. Is that the only thing we do in that day that we're good? Well, hopefully. Um, so the obligation is both give the Lord his day and also make Sunday a day of rest. Now, what does it mean to have a day of rest? Does it mean you're on the couch or on a bed? And if, you, if, you, if you move more than a nibble of chocolate, then you're breaking, breaking the man. <laughs> You have any chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> or glass of wine, I don't know. Take your pick. Pick your poison. All the above. Um, what does it mean to say we need a day of rest? You have to be unnecessary survival work. Unnecessary survival work. <laughs> We're not sleeping. 
And so what is unnecessary survival work? Doing the laundry. Laundry. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it might be necessary, depending on the laundry. But yes. Usually, um, <clears throat> the things are, that aren't, if you, you can put off for a minute, things are going to wait. The things aren't going to destroy your house or make it look like to live there. I mean, technically, it's supposed to get rid of a lot of things. You don't have to shower or, you know, <laughs> technically. But that's not what we're talking about. I mean, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the extra stuff I'm doing, especially when it comes to things of business, making money, or physical labor. Um, and so, if my hobby is gardening, I really enjoy gardening. Can I go out and garden even though it's hard work and I might sweat? Yeah, sure. If that's my business, can I go out and garden? No. It was necessary to help someone, right? Suppose I'm a cat, and he's on the side of the road, or a plumber. Someone calls and says, hey, uh, you know, a pipe just burst, and there's a flood in my basement. I say, sorry, it's Sunday. Can you call back tomorrow? It's an hour to see Sunday. But would I be ready for the commandment if I, if I say I'm going to run over? No. Because as an act of charity and help, that someone needs that kind of work. Um, suppose, well, we can't. Suppose, you know, I see someone on the side of the road, you know, it's broken down, it doesn't look scary or trustworthy. <laughs> could I stop and help them? Just, yeah. Even when I'm going to clean them in the Yes, I think Yes, yes. Now, we live in a day and age where, unless you are a mechanic, most people have cell phones these days, and probably it's not what you do anymore. Right. Unless you can ride somewhere. Uh, but mm. as the technology changes, the principles will remain the same, but the practical application will change. You know, these days, stuff that most people is going to do a whole lot of good unless you can't give someone a ride. And depending on who it is broken down, how many of them there are, and who you are, not be the wisest thing to do anything. Yeah, the whole idea is we're giving God his day, and we're not slaves because we are the freedom of the sons of God, one for us for the resurrection. And part of this is that we go to adore God, worship God as his ancestor. Saturday night. Is it okay to always go Saturday night? That's what you're doing Sunday. So, technically you can. But we have to be careful that we're always going Saturday, that that Sunday doesn't become for us just the day of sleep again, just the day of laziness, just the day of the accountability. I want to make certain that someday it keeps, keeps the flavor that plays for God's purpose. We're not trying to squeeze Sunday from an hour on Saturday. Now, if you like going to that mass for a reason, you go, yes, but make certain Sunday retains its place. Sunday still should be a time that you've got worship and glory and love to keep it first. We need that constant reminder of why we're made, who we're made for. What we're going to slide for. Right. I know people would tell me, oh, Father, you know, I have to do my chores on Sunday and you're ready for me. Well, that's not what our Lord says. <laughs> that's not, you know, what you're doing then is you're telling God, I'll give you an hour on Saturday. And the rest of the time is fine. And once in a while, that might be necessary. And once in a while, that might have to do. You want to be careful, though, though that. We give God the time and the place and the honor He's given. Not just the mass, but that's most important. But also by giving Him the day and giving Him the space of our hearts and our lives. Cool questions, comments, remarks? Just suppose with the Sabbath, Saturday. Yeah, okay. So the Sabbath day, if you look at the Old Testament, um, has two foundations. Where's my voice? Here's. Oh. 
So the Roman blade was made like it's made like. This is the Roman blade. The Jewish way was a sun, sun. So from sundown to sun. This was the day. And so when the day, when the sun disappeared, there was a new day. But, and so it, it was the, the renewal of God's creation, the renewal of the beginning, um, as opposed to this random period of the night or holes. This is a mathematical equation. This is a poetical description tying you back to what are you doing? What are you doing when, when, when you and everything else? What are you doing the evening when the sun down to the rest from each and prayers? The Jewish people, this is the beginning of the day. As you come to God, you finish the labor of your day, and you're to pray and sit with God and rest. And that's the story. We also have to remember the calendars of the Old Testament are very clear. Um, and so we're used to having very precise mathematical days and very precise accounting. If you look at the feasts, the Old Testament, the Leviticus, you will say it is the first grain of grain wheat appears, then we count six weeks from that. And that's the month. That's when the feast happens. Well, the first grain of grain will be where? <laughs> Who's feeding? How do you know? And so what they would do up, up the time of Christ was the Mount of Olives, where, where Christ has the guards and the guards out. What they would do it is there, there was a field in Jerusalem where the priests would go look, and they would decide this is the first trap, this is the first week. And that would be proclaimed through a trumpet blast on the Mount of Olives, saying this is the new feast, this is where we can count this. And that was then passed out to all the different other parts of Israel, which was the map of it. So it takes like three days to walk back and forth. It's pretty cute, based on the whole length of the country. Um, but, but, but that was how they handled their talent. It had to be announced every year, proclaimed every year, and figured out. It was part of the, the thing. Um, and then. The Romans were pragmatically pneumatically adjusted and fixed in the 16th century. Um, yeah. Is that. But I missed some of point. <laughs> <laughs> what time did Christ resurrect? Or is that relevant? Um, so no one knows because there's no one that was present there. Right? Because we've begun the Sabbath. Was exactly that. And so we know it was sometime in the night, tradition of midnight. Um, so the old, that, that's the tradition that each tradition would not begin until midnight, and it would then end about three or four in the morning with dawn. Uh, that was the tradition. We would start at midnight and wait, we'd stay up all night, clean and praising God until the dawn, and then you would go and have your feet to go to bed. Because the church is merciful, the church at least wakes till dark. It often is already nine o'clock, eight o'clock, nine 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 it's one of those things where no one's not recording it, so you'll, you'll have to ask. If it was midnight, 1157, or... You know. If it's 1203, you won't get paid check. But it is place midnight. Okay. 63 is a very simple line. I think you just more reiterate what you said. The whole of Sunday that is meant to be given over to prayer, family, and rest of work. Uh, there's one thing to do with that as well. So part of the Sabbath is to reconnect with God, but also with family. That's something we have lost in today's culture. Um, it used to be that Sunday was a day where you would go and visit relatives, you'd go and you'd call them on the phone, you'd go and you would hang out with friends. Um, 
the hectic culture like ours, something is now a day to your choice. It's a day to watch TV, it's a day to end up being very self focused, and we have a day for an isolated customer. Where it's meant to be a day where we tie back into God and to each other. One reason why we go to Mass public, it's not a private worship, it's not, you know, forget you all, I'm going to say Mass myself, you know, in the corner. You know, you know. It's we come together as a unity of the family. We tie back to each other of our friendship, our love, and our care. And also then we just bring it out then to our, our physical family, our spiritual families, our friends' families. And this is very something very key to this day. We come to worship God as a family. And so we tie back to each other through Christ and through his goodness to us. Do you want to talk about your little earlier or are you good? Um, okay. Is that a private home? Uh, maybe I'll tell you later. Okay. <laughs> okay. There we go. Let's see your lines of some recreational event. And it's a considerable distance away. I think it's going to depend on how exhausted you are and what the driving is going to do for the rest of the day. So, if it's recreation and you decide to skip Sunday Mass, not a good idea. If it's going to be so exhausting for you that the whole day is spent, um, you know, we, we, all you're doing is, 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 is it's, it's, a, it's a laborious, not a good idea. Um, but if it's something where it's the first day of vacation, you've been to mass, you're driving to get there, you're going to relax, could be okay. Right? So context kind of matters. If it's simply I'm driving five hours to go to a, to a party, and then drive five hours back, and then because of that, Sunday becomes a door for me. I, I don't pray well. Um, have I given God my son? And, and, and so I guess the question I would ask is, is it necessary? And by the end of it, has God taken priority? And if the answer is no, then it's not good. If the answer is yes, that this is helping me relax, it's helping me do the right things, connecting me to family and friends, wait. But if it's taking me from the meaning of something, then I shouldn't do it. What if they're, if like they're on vacation and Sunday comes up and you are in an area of a town, small town or something like that where there is no Catholic church. And, um, so, and, and you can't yeah. drive somewhere. I mean, is there like a 10 mile limit or something? Hours. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the course of Bobby days, yes. <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, the church all over the place. Yeah. Not depending on where you're at. Not a good staff member. So, a couple of things. You know, the question that you. I mean, is the intention good enough in a case like that? If you could find them, you would go. It depends on how much time went into the vacation and how much thought went into before it. I mean, there is a reasonable distance. Um, and it's about, you know, how far would you go to drive and see who lives from? You know, the or how far would you drive to go see your family if you were up there? Or your parents? Mm -hmm. Went to see my <laughs> <laughs> In that case, you're fine. <laughs> Never forget the mass. It's always too far for you. <laughs> And so there are a couple of questions that I would ask people. The first is, did you plan for it? Did you think about it? Did you try it? And as if I don't care enough to look and check when I get there, oops. Well, that's kind of my fault. 
Um, if it's I'm trying to go and I can't go because things happen, it's not my fault. Um, the general principle, the 10 mile rule we refer to, goes back to the horse and buggy days, <laughs> where a 10 mile ride would get through the grounds. So if you're here within, say, an hour, hour and a half of the church, you should go. If it's two, three hours away, you probably will go. Um, if you aren't making effort to go and trying to keep from going, you plan for everything else, my question would be, why do you make those plans? You know, but again, sometimes things happen, right? Or, or sometimes there are, you know, there's a family reunion and you're going on a cruise, thought there'd be a church there, a mass there, and things happen, you get the mass. Okay, you're going to go. Uh, or you're going camping and you can plan to leave early and then the, the rain's out of the floor, it takes longer to pack the lift I'm going to and you can't get the mass. Okay, you try. But it's different than saying, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to leave until 3 o'clock in the afternoon rather than 2 in the afternoon, I'm going to this mass. Well, that's your fault. So, it, so, yeah, there's, there's, little, there's this attention and effort. So, I, I, if somebody comes to me because I miss mass, I have two questions. Why did you miss mass? And did you make an honest effort? If the answer is I was lazy, okay, well, fine. We'll do that. <laughs> if the answer is I didn't make an honest effort at all, that's where I go, okay. If the answer is I tried, I'm going to make it. It's a very, very different question that, that I didn't care, I didn't make an effort, I didn't try. <clears throat> and so on our vacations, are we trying and making an honest effort? If making an honest effort, if we're trying and would have gone, we're fine. Okay. If you just don't give a darn, oh boy, I'm going to take my head for the mask. Ha ha No, one of the first things in the suitcase is to close. <laughs> but unfortunately, I know this is going to shock but there are some people, even in this church, who think the case the time to stop the lift of the because you're out is a break. And a break is a modification. I've told them that people told them that's my fix. Oh, okay. I'm on vacation, I'm going to ask on vacation. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's how that works. Mass times on your computer. That's right. I used it. 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 Got up in the morning, and it's like, let's see, there's nothing, no masses, you know, starting until late in the morning. Like, so I ended up driving up to Denver, moved around and stuff to drive back to Vegas and stuff, and ended up running into a bit. There was two churches that were having mass about the same time, but it was like, I was able to get to one, but it was like, if I hadn't had my phone, oh, yeah. It was like, oh, this was such a godsend. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in seminary, and I had to drive to school, I got to mass every single day because I would go to mass. That's how the man had to adjust to my mind and adjust my times. They got to mass every single day. It's easier now. I didn't get it. Even when I'm translating, they get it. Professions, military, people on ships, astronauts. Yeah. So professions. Um, so let, let's start with a category of, of people who are on call. We might not get the mass, but we might be able to get to this. So the question goes back to necessity and charity. <clears throat> <laughs> so things that are necessary for the community, firefighters, doctors, um, um, police, they have a necessity because without that, things fall apart. Gas station attendants? Depending on the gas station. Um, you know, these days, you can three set up a pump where you can, um, but back in the days when there was the blue laws, many places, cities would have, but there's different gas stations. They would take turns every every week of the month, which gas station was open. Um, so if there was an emergency, someone got gas, but usually it'd be closed. Um, some places, since this is said we're closed, you have to get gas out of night. No, it's your problem. Uh, but necessity and show. 
Um, and so if you're running a business that's necessary for somebody else, or is going to share with somebody else, you can do it. That might be kind of this mess. Um, unfortunately. Now, you live in a place where there's so many masses and so many mass crimes. I'm skeptical. People tell me I'm working, I can't get the mass. But it's possible, right? It's possible someone starts working at four in the afternoon and the hang doesn't end up working until Sunday afternoon. Hey, you know, I don't think every group that comes to that has that excuse. <laughs> but some of them. Um, for profession, so, so yes, yeah, so there's a real, this is any year, real chapter. Um, John Paul II, in one of his letters, he refers to restaurants. Where a restaurant could be open and someone could work, work as a cook as an act of charity. Your purpose is to make money very different than an act of charity. If it's ongoing to help people, um, do I have to cook? Right. So I want to make money and, 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 and focus on myself? No. Uh, but if, if I'm a single mother or I have a bunch of kids and I'm going to lose my job and going to start unless I work on Sunday. Okay, there's that now with me now. If it's, I'm going to get ahead, I don't want to tell my boss I need an hour to go to mass. That's not going to stop going in a session. Astronauts or ships, captains in the old days when you were in the Navy or you were an explorer, you were in a career that maybe necessitated you work with could get the mass all the time. That was seen as a necessity because of your career. Um, so explorers or sea seamen or um, one of the astronauts, I think, I think it was on Apollo 11, I believe it was, I want to say it was a Buzz Alfred, it was, was a good cat. Yeah. 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 One of the astronauts had permission from the Pope to take me with him on the space station and receive Holy Communion. Uh, every day. Every day. Every day. Um, so does the folk have a speed dial? Or? <laughs> <laughs> depends on the boat. It depends on who your body's with. <laughs> but, but yes. So if there's a real necessity or a need, um, in the word, the thing about Fondus the Lord, Saint Fondus the Lord. Talks about the grave inconvenience or, or grave necessity. This is the way he kind of works out um, when you have problems with work, when you have this mass. It's not just it's going to cause work and effort, but there's going to be a serious harm to me or, or someone close to me. Um, there's going to be a serious difficulty in some of if it simply requires thought, effort, and planning, that's not very good means. If it's something that's going to be hurt somewhere. Um, so, the, I, I have an uncle who's dying, and I, I could leave field of mass, but, you know, I may miss the death. Well, you probably don't get that one. That's, that's not, that'd be very good to miss that. Um, I would pray to a woman and go on to mass where it's hot and there's crowds and everything through all. I'm going to be sick. Well, Yes, you physically get the mass, but you're okay. <laughs> uh, it's, not, it's, not, it's not contagious, it's not something where you're sick, but just, why well, have PTSD? Don't have PTSD, but won't get a crowd, which is going to send them off in a panic attack. Physically get it. They wouldn't have an excuse not to attend mass. Uh, still, keep the Lord's Day the best they can, so they'll have to keep that day and that time. But to attend mass, to, to take care of themselves and work, they have a good reason for that. Make sense? Does watching like Sunday Mass on TV account for anything? No. <laughs> okay. What about those? No. The answer is still no. The answer is still no. Um, so, if you cannot go, then the obligation ceases. What is impossible is not required. And so launching a mass is a nice thing to do. But it doesn't 
I mean, yeah, I mean, even if you're yeah. saying if you have a valid reason. Right. You can choose not to watch Mass Chessies. It's good to do it, it's available, it's helpful to do, but there is no requirement, it's not a substitute, it doesn't change anything. Think about this way. Is a photograph the same thing as a video? Is face kind of that same thing as a No. And, and so what we're asked to do is to visit our Lord. We're asked to see it. Darn it. No, I mean, I mean so, so if you can go, this isn't substitute, but it's a nice thing. Is there any grace that comes from that? Uh, only in the sense that we're giving God time and prayer. Uh, mm -hmm. But the one, the one thing where it would give you extra grace would be for a mind mass, because the, so the, you can't receive sacraments long distance, you can receive blessings long distance. Um, so, so confession for health doesn't work, but a blessing does as well. Um, yeah, so the confessional has to be, you know, for, for the mass, there has to be a physical presence. Um, but not a recording or a telephone or a, but yeah, so it, even over the telephone, the doesn't work. It's a physical presence. So during COVID, I tried to say, oh, the priest is visiting you through the Zoom of the Sabbath. Can't do that. Can't do the Sabbath to Zoom. Less people, but I can't give a confession or one thing. Uh, obviously, we have to do it. No one's going to agree you can't give a confession. So, there's a lot of people that don't realize that and are still watching the rest on TV. So, remember that for a mortal sin, knowledge is required. And so if they're truly ignorant, the Lord forgives and understands. Uh, if they're not ignorant, then they're in trouble. But if they're truly ignorant, truly don't understand, the Lord being merciful and good and trying to save us. Right? The Lord always tries to find excuses for us and tries to find ways to make it easy for us. The Lord always tries to make excuses for us and to make things easy for us. Right, on the cross, Father, they don't know what they're doing. Um, any difficulty is from here, not there. Um, and, and so if someone truly does not know, but would do differently if they did, the Lord doesn't hold it that accountable for it. If somebody would do whatever they're doing, no matter what they were told, that they just happen to think it's okay, that when it cared, they knew it was wrong, well, then their heart's still in the wrong place. So, if you're ignorant, truly, and are trying to serve God, the Lord says, I understand. Or you're an idiot, but I understand. Maybe the last time I was talking about this commentary. But this is kind of commentary. Do you have a question there? Or is it good? Sorry. Good. Yeah. Number 64. Perception of Holy Communion. As a final practical matter, I would like to give a few important points to the actual reception of Holy Communion. Inasmuch as we receive the living God in the cross, we must be careful to treat both the sacrament with the utmost respect. This applies first and foremost to priests and deacons who regularly handle the second species. It applies also and less so to those who are at any time in the whole community. The first point is not to rush. Rushing through Mass or communion is not only possibly sinful, also a dangerous occasion to drop the host or lose part of the moral way. Taking time to respectfully handle of the sacraments also works. The second point is for those receiving communion. 
Well, I'm going to stop there actually, but we'll go into that later. Worry about that. So, yes. So, treat the Eucharist with care. Being careful doesn't simply just mean being slow or being deliberate. It means being full of care. This matters. And so as I, as I talk to the Lord, as I pan the Lord, as I, as I approach the Lord, I do so with deliberate love and attention. Going back to our discussion on full active and conscious participation. And so the bishop simply says, don't wish. Everyone's going to get communion. You don't need to leave 30 seconds early. Take your time and welcome home. Um, don't Because if you rush, first of all, it's, be, it's very easy to forget who's there. It's very easy then to focus only on the externals and to think, well, I put in my time, but you know, check my watch, I'll pay attention, I'm not really there anymore. You know, if you ever talk to somebody who's clearly not really present? Do you feel respected and loved that way? <laughs> so we want to give God the same respect. You know, for their their saying, Lord, shut up. I want to leave you, I want to get lunch on me, I want to get to a friend that I meet, come on more, hurry up. <laughs> well, you know, we're not being careful with you. And this then will lead to very or easily dropping hosts or fragments. <clears throat> Second point is for the number 66. Search Star Wars joke here if you wish. Second point for those receiving you. Holy Mother Church allows two methods of reception. Oh, can I say something? Oh, please. Sorry, oh, if you care, we're risk of dropping a host of fragments. And if that does happen, mm -hmm. stop everything, right? Mm -hmm. And then you go and get holy water, is it that you get? The thing the area? Or if you, if you need to. So you mean you as a communicant or me as a priest seeing it happen? Well, so, oh, yeah. <laughs> so if I as a priest see something fall, the pen of where it falls, it falls on his hand on the pen, don't worry about it. It falls on the floor, what I'm going to do then is pick it up and slip it myself, and then cover the spot with the ball. And then later on, when I have a chance to uh, purify it, come back in water, and then go over the area of some water and dry it, so that any part of it picked up and swallowed it. If it's a precious blood, do it right there. Because you can't let, you know, let, let that sit. Because then it will dry it or it be a part of it was a lot more stable. This is blood to take care of right now. Um, if you're a communicant and you're walking on the aisle and you sneeze and you drop something, or you, you know, your baby, you know, the your four-year-old or eight-year-old, you know, has an accident and, and drops the most on their shirt. And then depending on the it, uh, the condition of the host at that point it is so consumable. If it's not consumable, it's going to have to be picked up and, and burned or buried. I mean, the ashes are buried, it's burned, uh, depending, depending on, you know, um, if it's on a shirt, that, that shirt should be bought in a very careful way so that the uh, uh, any part of the host get, get first dissolved in the water and then poured down at the sink. And it's a crayon, not the same. 
Uh, so the, the principle is that our Lord is present in the species of, of the, uh, as long as the appearance of So as long as the appearance of bread and the appearance of wine remain, so is our Lord. If the host or the wine corrupts, or the present blood corrupts, the appearance is broken. So the host is mold, it's all our Jesus. If it dissolves the water, or burn fire, it's all our Jesus. If um, it's warm, it's all our Jesus. So once, once it corrupts, it's no longer our uh, but you still treat it as holy, and so you still would dissolve it, um, and then pour it down to crowd It's a special shape designed for ending up in the ground rather than soup. And that was a crowd you have just been poured around. Yeah. Yeah. This is the special sink made to the ground, not the sewer. You have to put a crowd in the court at the ground, or the place bottom needs to be set up. Maybe a pot of plant, maybe a, a place from way off, with, with ordinary traffic stop coming up. But again, once it's been dissolved in water, it's one world. Or if, if it's fresh blood on a, uh, on a purifier, if it's in a dry, it's one world. They still want to treat it with respect and care and then dissolved and poured down this aquarium. Uh, yeah, I just gave the name. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so you have great care because it's all. And, and every particle is truly, fully, and completely Jesus Christ. Worthy of respect, adoration, and all. It's not the size, not the shape, it's not the beads. It's it looks like bread at the consecration, it's all. Um, now unfortunately what it means there are times that we eat a lot of lint and candle wax and ceiling ground. That was not served. <laughs> <laughs> and so they put it out, okay, but um, that, that was not a word, this is for us. Or, you know, that came from the ceiling, okay. And so that was partial. It's <laughs> <laughs> better, better than being a Lord. Okay, uh, now, you were, you were saying, like, uh, if it's on a shirt or something, it has to be clean in a special way. Why don't they like, knock the holy water off on the floor? So that's not our work, it's a little different. Um, so that I would wipe up with a, a, a towel uh -huh. and let, let it rot. And after it rise, then you water it okay. Okay. Um, I wouldn't do that with an ordinary paper towel because those are not retain moisture mm -hmm. and, and those are hard to get rid of in the right way. Um, you still have them dry and they can then bury them or burn them. Um, but they're going to retain moisture. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, you would just wipe up that. So if you like are blessing yourself with holy water at home and the sun drops, you're supposed to wipe up the cloth. I mean I try to use as much as drops, but Yeah, I, I mean so the thing is we sprinkle holy water around the place. Um, and it's fine to let it there because that is a bus. Sorry, right. so I don't say anything wrong with drops. Okay. If you talk about if you jump, jump a bucket over or spill a bottle on, it's a little different. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a big puddle. But if you're sprinkling things or if you're sprinkling with less salt, um, it's supposed to stay. It's good to stay. Yeah, otherwise, you'd be a lot of trouble finding. <laughs> oh no! Other <laughs> <laughs> well, last time, you have to take a shovel last time. Wipe down the walls. <laughs> but yeah, if you spill something. Good. The second point for those receiving you. All the Mother Church allows two methods of reception. On the tongue or in the hands. Notice the wording here. The first is on the tongue, on the mouth, or with the teeth. The second is in the hands, not on top of another, on a single hand or in the fingers. This means both hands to be free of holding anything that the host can immediately direct in the mouth. If both hands cannot be free, as when, for example, parents holding the child in their arms, even more appropriate for receive all the time. So in the hands, the traditional way of doing it, left hand on top, your lefty, otherwise, otherwise, if you're right, if 
<laughs> your right and left hand up. They're forming a throat with your hands. And then you're taking it with the receiving it. They make a service, no part of this thing. Um, it's not this, it's not give me and grab <laughs> them. You know, and, and also you know, on the tongue, you're not biting the host, you're not putting your tongue on this so that it's not going around. You know, the sides of the back, tongue out all the way, so that the host is all the time. Um, not bad. Biting the hand feels easy. <laughs> the best hand feels you could get. <laughs> One time I did clamp down, it's like the you know, fall clothes, like, don't pull that out. <laughs> to my hands more than those to their tongue, but I'm going to go right tongue and my hands like that. Most of the time, it stick to my tongue. Absolutely. 
Um, and so, and so, but not one people in American miserable case, the markets tell people how to do it. Either way, the say is, think of the Lord, ask for the Lord wants from you, and do it for the Lord. And receive that. Receive it the most loving, honor giving, respectful way you can. And in some people's case, it might be that. But if it's in the hand, be careful not having particles on your fingers. And, you know, hear horror stories of extraordinary people of the community who could give communion out and then wipe off their hands on their pants and walk away. It's a problem. And they're, they're saying, they're misunderstanding there. But, uh, How does that happen, Father? I think I've seen deacons do that. After every post that he gave, after he'll wipe his hand on doesn't the priest say anything like that? Well, apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> he should, though. Right? I mean, so it, it should have been addressed in his formation after the, the bishop. Um, but yes, absolutely. Because he's just taken the part of the Lord, and now they're all in his cloak, the vestments. They need to be long in a very special way. Well, are um, they doing that because they, they touch the mouth and they want to wipe off their hand? Even there, what I do at that point is first, because it's part of my fingers, it could be. First, so there is um, supposed to be, usually, here we're not the right way, because we're not the church. There's supposed to be a little, little illusion school on the altar. Right. That if there's a deacon or a couple priests, they would go, they would. Purify the fingers there first and wipe the ball. And so, if someone lift your fingers, you clean them, go to the altar, down the hosts, wipe off your fingers, water, wipe them off, and then go and get a little uh, hand sanitizer in the back. Yeah. Great. But don't. <laughs> we have said some, because people have said that to me too. I mean, I know just sitting on it. Should we run to the priest and ask him if maybe he didn't even know? I think it's important enough that, yes, yeah, it should be brought to attention. If the priest, who's in her last off, and you know, she won the bishop. Because honestly, what's happened there is desecration of the Eucharist. Um, in the same way that the priests were not purifying the vessels or were letting things drop, not caring about them, you, the priest, the bishop, turn off. Because this is a public desecration and it is a public teaching of the importance of the meaning, or the importance in this case, of Jesus. Um, and, and so if the priest desecrated the same species, that, or deacon, that is, is a grave scandal and a very grave sin. Um, and it's deliberate and with knowledge that even if it's so serious, it's a the Holy Lord. But it has to be deliberate with knowledge. If it's, but if it's ignorance and, and, and on, on thinking about it, it still is a grave sin or sacrilege. But if it's the knowledge and the intent, that's that's the thing they call the bishop can't be has to go It's automatic special. So it's, it's, a, it's a very, very serious thing. It's like, oh, geez. Yes. Because again, we're serious now. Right. Um, cool. Okay. We can cover one. I hope. The case. Spiritual communion. Inasmuch as the community procession is for the actual objective of the Eucharist, it is not appropriate at that time to come forward for blessings. Additionally, priests and deacons shock the blessings by my life. It's the last lady. They can't. Uh, if for any reason someone's able to receive communion on a given Sunday for a time, should instead at that point remain in the pew, the time of Mass, they can act spiritual communion, keeping in mind that blessings given to the entire gathering assembly in the Mass. The Apostle Lord is one of the best prayers for spiritual communion. He was given before the Lord. A couple things to talk about. <laughs> Why is the bishop insistent, don't get a blessing at this point? What's the big deal? I would say it's, it's 
in the big church, it just makes everybody else rush. Changes focus. Changes focus. Mm -hmm. What you're doing then is your sayings are equivalent. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying this is a, a reserved thing, which requires a kind of preparation. Um, it also then make, makes it, um, it very easily makes coming forward to something you're required to do, and something that is not tempting then to receive on word. Is it becomes part of the routine, opposed to I, I want to make sure I'm prepared well every single time, I want to have the right attention every single time, um, and and so in both the bishop's words and the books of the church, the lesson should not be given that way. Now, if I had a priest in there at mass on the floor, across the arms of me, what do I do? What I say is, I try to help them make an act of worship you. Receive what it is in your heart. I say, receive the Lord Jesus into your heart. It's help them make an act of worship you. That's what the bishop has suggested we do at an act of This is not, I bless you, it's not a you know, blessing, it's not, but it is. Receive this into your heart. Open your heart to Jesus. I do say But yet, if you notice, when a little kid comes, I don't you know, do this, I don't you know. But I will say, receive this in your heart. What does the church mean? What's the point? What's going on there? And so, what is it? Yes, right. So, if you were in here, I would change it. If you're sick and unable to receive it. So, it's spiritual pretend. Let's start there. No. It's a good beginning. But I like that. I like that. I like that. So, it is a kind of real communion. The communion is not with the Eucharist, with the sacrament. It's communion in your heart, your mind, your soul with Jesus. Even though you do not yet at that point receive the actual sacrament. So it's still seeking communion with our Lord. It's still seeking real communion. It's still trying to have a true real communion, but not the sacrament. And so it's an act of the will, an act of the heart, an act of love. We say to the Lord, Lord, give me the graces and come to me as though you're able to receive. How many times a day can you receive the sacrament of holy communion? Twice. 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 But the second time has to be in what context? A mass. Part of the mass. Part of the mass. So the first time could be communion service. First time could be um, the second time can't be. Second time has to be a mass. How about two masses? Two masses, five. Three masses, not that would work. <laughs> and it's, it's from midnight to midnight. So if you go to a funeral in the morning and go to, go to the, the evening display mass, it's by the very year today, you're okay, you're taking both halves. You go to morning mass, and then a funeral, and then a Saturday night mass, one of those you can't receive. Even though it's for Sunday, it's still a midnight period. So, how many masses can a priest participate in? Technically or religiously? <laughs> <laughs> so, the law of the church is supposed to be one. The church said, in its necessity, it could be as much as two, and in extreme necessity, as many as three. And in uh, Santa Fe Diocese, it was five. And, and so the bishop allows well, that sometimes, but that's not church law. Um, there are times when it is required, but part of the issue, um, and, and this is something that I'm not trying to this. I wish I could have fixed that Um Back in the day, a church.
church decide that it have a mask? What? Church. Oh. Besides, one mask. Right? Because everyone can gather together at the same time. You can make it. Well, that was, that was your fault. Bring that time. You didn't have three options. We're trying to appease different communities. You had different groups and different cultures at different times. We're all the same. We're all the same. Time, the same. Time. And so there was one mass for the people. There are a lot of churches you might have one. Church this size would have been one. They would be a really full mass, but we have one mass. And so part of the issue now is we have so many people who are trying to appease and, and trying to benefit. Do you do it in three different languages on Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> But that's not an all or natural or a helpful thing, because that would end up having to be a few minutes. You have three different parents. It's not ideal at all. Uh, ideally, we have one mass on Sunday. And if you do things like hang out after mass, have public after mass, and do this other mass, then great. Can't do that here, realistically. It's one of those things that are problem, I'm not sure what the solution is. Um, because, yes, yeah, three different languages. Um, and, and so the church law comes from the mindset church law is always going to change <laughs> the, other thing. Um, the church law comes from a mindset of one community, one culture, one place the United States or the places in Europe or in South America don't have several masses in one place go over to Spain, go over to Mexico or Argentina, not going to have an English mass and Spanish mass and it could be one mass When I was going to Spanish Argentina, even though it was a big tourist town, it wasn't English masses. It was Spanish. The United States is very unusual. Um, much is always helpful or good. That's, you know, it, it's the balance, you know. Try to get people to have the mask, and it does help some people, but you also end up that creative place. You end up multiplying masses. You end up that with things where and the reason why the church said the deal is one mass, even though it might be more an act of practice, is because preparation and thanksgiving. It's, it's very difficult to prepare well and thank God well for a mass. It's very easy not to prepare well, not thank God well for a mass. And then you end up then with the priest who celebrated the mass about thinking and tired and distracted, and therefore the danger of um, not being careful at work, a great scandal and disrespect. Now, at times it's necessary, yes. I do it. But is that good or ideal? No. With the church, before I say one mass, the focus on well, I don't want any of one mass, yes. Is that possible? No. Um, Did you get permission from the bishop to offer the three different Yeah, people. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. I didn't specifically say that I had permission to give me permission for the show. <laughs> it was, it was between two masses, and then I asked if I could go third mass or last mass. I said yes. Go, go, go check with the camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't worry. It's just good for any other anything. Fork top every single one of them. So, yeah, I mean, it, it is something that has become a necessity. Um, I wish you had a culture, a place where you could have one mass and you had it could be so good so many ways. Um, even personally, that's easier day. It's not the same. It would be a TV. But we're spiritual communion again. We're back, we're back to this now. <laughs> what you're doing is receive communion with the Lord the way you can. So it is communion with Jesus. To the extent possible. Usually an act of the heart of the will. How many times do 
the next Christian year? Because I'm just one. So, and there are many beautiful prayers by the saints. It can be as simple as, Lord, come to my heart. It can be as complicated as, go through a, an hour of prayer meditation, they go to your heart. Um, but it's a good thing to do often. It's a good thing to make part of the regular practice of our spiritual life. It's a good thing to do it many times. Receive, receive the sacrament also spiritually. It's an extremely beautiful practice, type of thing. You're, you're asking the Lord to give you the graces, the blessings you would have received. Um, now, suppose I am a deliberate mortal sin and reject God. Can I still do this? You can do it. Yes. 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 Absolutely. So if I'm deliberately rejecting God, as opposed to I found a weakness, I'm trying to get back and have a, have a daily confession. This is a good thing to do. But yeah, if I'm deliberately pushing God away and don't care and I want to change. It's not going to be a nice book. Because the heart will will not be a problem there. Okay, now let's stop there. It's 5.15. Looking at our calendar, next week is the uh, 19th. Yes, 19th. Um, and that's Christmas week, that's New Year's week. So we'll meet one more time and take a break for two weeks for Christmas and New Year's, and to let your priest uh, begin to pray. <laughs> um, hopefully, they'll be back at the church. Not going to work. Um, <laughs> if I really meant it. Call me up. Little conversation. <laughs> Um, any other questions at this point? I was just going to make a comment. Um, last week, John was talking about um, why aren't people speaking up more in this sort of thing? And it made me think of, I said, St. Catherine, St. Catherine, oh, St. Catherine of Siena, Bill, that touched this up. And um, not speaking is speaking. We've had enough of exhortations to be silent, cry out with 100,000 tongues. I see that the world is rotten because of silence. And, um, How old is she now? Well, she had to go back to Rome one day from France. And, and then, what was the Diocletian heresy again? Diocletian heresy? She was alive around that time. Well, Diocle Diocletian was a emperor of the fourth century. So, you're mixing up the terms on which you're going to refer to. Yeah. Well, just, yeah, Diocletian was the last, last persecution of the church, by mm -hmm. Diocletian. But Catholic of Siena was the 13th century. 13th century. Uh, so, come on. If you think about it from the right side, let me know when we talk about it. Okay. <laughs> it, was the, it was the great western schism, is what it was. It was the, the, yeah. all, all the heresies of the, you know, the council of right the Pope, and all that kind of stuff. This question comes up later in the discussion here. Um, so we've got parishioners, as a few years, just going to distribute it, and we're going to distribute it. And someone, maybe a Protestant or Catholic, that doesn't know or care about the Eucharist, and so it's taken a lot of back to the few. What is the parishioner's responsibility and the consideration of this cause of destruction the focus in the past? That is so important at the very least. Their responsibility is to go to a water. Right there. Right there. Into a water. Absolutely. If they're comfortable talking in front of the person, in front of the person. It's good, it's good. People are different. People, people are, it's good to them what it is, it depend on, is it some bike with tattoos, or is it some little, little ladies? 
Maybe you're not confronted. If you are, right in front of you. Uh, but at the very least, tell the father, and then do it. Um, so the least your responsibility is to, is to go up, get back to the ground, and say, Father, retention is a problem. That's a big enough deal to interrupt. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and if I just have walked off the post, I'll stop. I, I am, I pray my service to look for me and I have to look for me. So it's only two That was a prisoner I know I love this character. You know, this, this is a prisoner I know about, not as, as quite as careful that. But if I said a stranger, if he's in the hand, I, I, I don't care for the look. Because there have been times where I've caught people walking out from posts. Now sometimes it's, it's innocent. <coughs> Well, it's not ill attention, but you never know. Yeah. You never do know. you take it from them or make them do it? It depends. Because some um, people have ill intent, like they don't want to consume it because they're evil. And, and, and so, first of all, what I've only done is I'll say, consume the most. If they ignore me, they're coming likely, I'll start with them that they want. Snatch it away. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll, I'll start by saying, you need to consume the most here. If they ignore me, you're going to want to take it over and they won't die. What if somebody says, well, I'm keeping this because so-and-so is at home sick, and I told them I'd bring them home. And I say, you're talking after yeah, mass. <laughs> <laughs> because you're not a person to die. You're not a person from home to die. Yeah. You don't. You have to take care of the pigs. You have to try to do it well. You have to know what you're doing. Talk to me. I'll say, oh, I'll take you in afterwards. Don't, don't. You're not allowed to bite yourself. I know you will. <laughs> if someone were to try to give me that story, it's probably a story anyway. Um, I would just tell them to talk me out of the house. And I would try to get a smile. Talk to me Smile. What's that? You can tell the person you want us to talk to you after mass, but you can consume the Eucharist and give it back to you. So the first thing I do is I'll say consume it. If they don't consume it right immediately, I, I don't even ask. I just take it. That's pretty sure my grab. I have done that before. Yes. As well as that happens also in persons supposedly taking it for the second time in the afternoon. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. No. You don't. No play with it. Yeah. Well, and, and, it's, and sometimes it is innocent. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I know stories of priests who have found, um, you know, Protestant brides who, who, who went to Rome with a Catholic husband and kept the host as a souvenir. Oh, God. It, wasn't, it wasn't malicious, it was just a beautiful, wonderful thing. Uh, you know, on their wedding night, or on their, you know, this would be nothing better. I put in a scrapbook. Uh, 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 years later, show the priest, and oh, that's the one time wedding night. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't malicious, it wasn't out of tent, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was just totally the other thought of the It was a beautiful souvenir, but you had it out of mass. Me to, and he didn't understand why the priest was upset over that. <laughs> 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 Tell him to read 1 Corinthians chapter 11. <laughs> I, I don't know. He, 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 yes. the, the, we're the uh, offspring of Episcopal priest. And I guess he felt like, I'll tell him. I tried to explain it to him. And so again, the, the, the Lord understands ignorance or mistakes. When there's malice, I shall give a daughter because I know better. That's what's wrong. No. And so at the, at the very least, what you're doing is you're offending soil sensibilities. The very least you're doing is I don't care enough about your faith, you mind your church perspective. At the very least. Um, so so if I were to go to Orthodox Church, I would not receive that. I believe I believe it's Jesus. 
Because I want to receive them because they don't want the church. They didn't really get that. Um, there, there was a, a few weeks ago, there was an Orthodox man who was dying. He was coming to the hospital. He said, You come anointed. He's waiting there. You're anointed. And I asked him to pray for us. I can like, tell him wants me to. If I just went on it, then it's be very offensive. But that's progression. To the bottom of the last grace. Um, and so they had a they had a thought had a thought having an opening because you don't know, really put it in the top. But if I just shown up and anointed them, that would be very offensive for them. Um, and so I think I cannot do, I can't force someone to you can't even write down my my baptisms are right by sacraments. Um, and so in the same way, it's just a pure politeness, if you're in another religion, uh, don't offend that religion. I don't think you understood. But, yeah, then what I would say, you know, it's just kind of honor. Yeah. So if it's simply, if it's simply ignorance. I'm talking about three first And, and I, I would just tell them, we believe something different than you believe. Um, and, and we believe it's a different thing than you, you think it is. Because of that, it has not to proceed. Yeah. The stake is different than now. Fortunately. The Lord, fortunately, the Lord is merciful. Let's close the prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time, for this conversation. Help us to respect and love you more deeply day by day. Help us to receive you always worthy and to honor you in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. May all that we say and do be for your glory. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be. For the Lord of God, Amen. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.